All right, so this time we're going to do multiple questions at once. It's going to be questions 7 through 10. So let's get started. So basically, we have a biologist here. They spent many years researching the rate of evolutionary change in finch populations of a group of islands. It was determined that the average beak size, both length and mass, of finches in a certain population increased dramatically during an intense drought between 1981 and 1987. During the drought, there was a reduction in the number of plants producing thin walled seeds. All right, let's read our question now. Which of the following uh, procedures was most likely followed to determine the change in beak size? So let's just go ahead and go through each of these answer choices. So for answer choice A here, we have a few finches were trapped, so a few of them, in 1981 and again in 1987, and their beak sizes were compared. So my first thought is like, okay, well, just a few. And the other thing is they were only measured in 1981 and then in 1987. So we're not actually getting multiple data points, right? We can't like, like normally, you know, you'd have a graph with multiple data points. You could just extrapolate it. So that way you could, you know, get like a line of best fit, right? Something like this, but we don't have any, we don't have any of that. So yeah, answer choice A definitely does not make sense. Uh, let's, let's look at answer choice B. So answer choice B says the beak size in 15 finches was measured in 1987, and the beak size in the original finches was determined by estimation. Okay, but again, how could you estimate it, right? They're not giving us any function, no formula. Yeah, that one's definitely out. Uh, answer choice C, the beak size in a large number of finches was measured every year from 1981 to 1987. And yeah, this one looks correct because again, you have a large sample size and you have multiple data points, right? For multiple years leading up. So you can, you should be able to make like a good you know, extrapolation as to how the beak size changes. Uh, and then D, finches were captured and bred in 1981, and the beak size of the offspring was measured. This just doesn't make any sense. So therefore, the correct answer is C. All right, so let's move on to uh, answer choice A. Oh, sorry. Um, question A. Okay. Which of the following statements might best explain the increase in average beak size in a finch population during the trap? So now we want an explanation. And let's, so I guess here's one way to think about this. Let's just do a, a basic flow chart. So we have drought, right? And that caused what? Well, right here it says during the drought, there was a reduction in the number of plants producing thin walled seeds. So the drought caused thin walled seeds to decrease, right? And uh, because of this, so I'll go over here. Because of this, beak size increased. So basically, I want to make an assumption that is the most valid and least, um, uh, I guess, kind of arbitrary, right? So let's look at our answer choices. Finches with bigger beaks are better able to crack thick walled seeds and produce more surviving offspring. So basically, what do we have to assume here? We have to assume that there, that if thin walled seeds go down, where there's going to be thick walled seeds. The other thing we assume is, well, they just tell us that that is going to help them produce more surviving offspring. So this one looks pretty solid. Looks like it could be the right answer. Let's see answer B. Uh, finches with bigger beaks can attack and kill finches with smaller beaks. Well, maybe they can, but you know, maybe it's such a disadvantage that they're not able to eat enough, and the number of Finches with smaller beaks out, end up outnumbering them, right? So B is out. C, finches with bigger beaks possess more power. Oh, sorry. And the other thing with B is that if that was the case, then why is this trend just now happening, right? Again, we would expect that before and after the drought. But uh, anyway, okay. Finches with bigger beaks possess more powerful flight muscles and are able to find more food. Well, again, if that's the case, then why weren't their beaks always larger, right? Uh, and then finches that crack large seeds develop larger beaks over time. And again, this is basically a spinoff of the uh, Lamarckian. I don't know if I spelled that right. But anyway, the Lamarckian theory, which basically states that a trait, the more that a trait is used, or I guess the more that that organ is used, it leads to basically hypertrophy of that specific, you know, part or organ. Um, and then that trait can be or I guess that hypertrophy can basically be passed down to the offspring. And we know that uh, 
you know, in the exception for epigenetic cases, that's you, you can't pass down a trait that is, you know, that's developed through hypertrophy in your lifetime. Anyway, okay, so therefore, uh, answer A is going to be correct. All right, let's go to question nine. Okay, which of the following best describes the mechanism behind the change in beak size in the finch population? So, again, bef before you even look at the answer choices, let's just kind of talk about what this mechanism has to be. So, again, they're trying to measure evolutionary change, right? So the mechanism has to be natural selection. And then we need to remember, what is natural selection? Well, natural selection is just essentially um, survival of the fittest, right? And that's I, I essentially, essentially I, I want an answer choice that is something along those lines, right? Something along these lines, and then again, the other the other key is that survival of the fittest. Well, the fittest is going to be uh, the result of genetic diversity. So there's genetic diversity among different individuals within the population, which allows for there to be comparisons between fitness of those individuals. Right? Okay. Uh, so let's look at our answer choices. So answer choice A: the formation of two new finch species from a single parent species. So this is not possible, right? Um, at least I don't think it's possible. Yeah, this is like a speciation event that happens after two offspring are created, which is just impossible. So A is out. Um, a change in gene frequencies and the finch population due to selective pressure uh, from the environmental change. Yeah, this one looks pretty good, right? We're talking about uh, gene frequencies changing, uh, you know, selective pressure, right? These are all terms that we would expect for natural selection. Let's look at answer choice C, a new allele appearing in the finch population as a result of a mutation. Okay, so remember, a mutation is not the, equal to an allele change. Right, a mutation. Well, you know, there's there's different types of mutations, right? But an allele is a large amount. It's basically multiple genes, right? Typically, multiple genes, or even if it's one gene, um, genes are composed of multiple. You know, they're composed of lots of genetic code, right? And a mutation is only going to change one tiny, tiny piece of that code, right? So it's very unlikely that we're going to get an allele change from a single mutation. Um, but it's basically impossible, right? So C is out. And then D, the achievement of dynamic equilibrium in the finch population as a result of homeostasis. Well, this is, I mean, roughly speaking, this is basically just another fancy way of saying carrying capacity. And uh, that has nothing to do with or it's just not a valid uh, you know, mechanism for the beak size change. So that's out. So therefore, B is correct. Let's go to question number 10. The biologist discovered that from 1988 to 1993, the average beak size declined to pre-1981 levels. The reversal in beak size from 1988 to 1993 was most likely related to which of the following events um, so again, if the drought is what caused the beak size to increase, then, you know, we're, if I get rid of the drought, or hang on, let me, let, let me write it as a flow chart. So if I have beak size here, well, okay, sorry, it's getting a little loud. Let, 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 let's, let, let's just go through it and, and just go through these. Uh, answer choice real quick. A loss of food supply for the finches. Well, then they would all just die, right? The end of the drought. Well, maybe. An increase in drought conditions. Well, remember, the drought conditions are what cause the beaks to get larger, so that doesn't make sense. D, an increase in predators consuming finches. Well, then again, their population would decrease, so therefore the correct answer is B. All right, guys, sorry about that. Um, dogs barking in the background for the last uh, minute or so, but anyway, um, the correct answer is B. If you guys have any questions, feel free to comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.